Hey everyone, Steve here from Big Head Tech, and I, I know, I know, I know. This comparison should have been done a long time ago. I just, when I started standardizing everything, I just didn't have this particular CPU, at least this exact one. So today, what we have is, this is a 2600, so this is used in the project, and then this is the 3600, which is used in my test system. Uh, so what we really wanna take a look at today is you know if you already have this is there enough performance to justify leaping to here i kind of think maybe maybe not generally speaking even what the theoretical gains were not really but there could be some scenarios and you know maybe you just need that extra verification because you just got a bonus and you want to splurge a little bit and bonus 3700x uh, performance benchmarks are here as well I just didn't get a chance to do an independent video on that, but I do have those benchmarks included as well. But let's take a look at the testing scenario, the test bench, all that fun stuff, and I got about six benchmarks to go over. So, full disclosure, this is not an exact science video, and I'll show you why here for the test setup. For every setup, we have pretty much the same. The CPUs are gonna vary. Dark Rock Pro 4, a two by eight gigabyte DDR4, 600 megahertz kit uh, for uh, AMD. We used ASRock B450 Pro 4 for Intel. Uh, we used the Gigabyte Z390 Elite. <clears throat> I think it's the Orse Elite. The Be Quiet Pure Power 11, Silent Base 801, Crucial P1. Now, the 2600 is a little bit different. None of these are really going to make a difference outside of what I had to change. So, NHD 15, come on, guys. Like, that's not gonna make a difference. On open bench, this thing hit like 49 degrees or something like that. Uh, the memory I had to change, it was not stable with the other memory. And when I downclocked at like 3200, I didn't wanna mess with timings. So that's why I just went with the 3000 megahertz kit because it was CL15, worked fine. Same motherboard, different power supply. It's almost the same. We're not anywhere near cap. So it's actually a slightly better unit, just 50 watts less. And the SSD, um, I'm running the games off of an external drive. So that really doesn't matter, it's an external SSD. So just full disclosure there. Uh, programs are standard the same. I'm running the same programs during gaming. Synthetics are going to have very few. Uh, always assume motion blurs off. Secondary display is always 1080p. Precision boost uh, for the GPU was set up. Memory was set with XMP. Fans are normalized. And uh, synthetic loads only had a couple mandatory monitoring programs. Now, disclosures. <clears throat> 900K ran at 5 gigahertz in this testing. 9600K at 4.6. The Ryzen 9 boosted rate around 4.6 of multi-core to 4.243. The Ryzen 7 boosted 4.4 of multi-core right around that 4.2-ish mark. Uh, it went a little bit higher in some cases. The 3600 was boosting to 4.2 and almost 4.2 on all core. And the 2600 was hitting 3.9 and multi-core 3.7 to 3.8. Now, the reason why I didn't manually overclock the... Um, Ryzen chips, a couple reasons. I, and this is why I use different uh, memory. I'm a big proponent for my viewers is I always get a lot of troubleshooting tips because things don't work. Overclocking is not work. This isn't working, that isn't working. I want you to be able to go in, click a button or two, and for you to get the best experience possible. So if it requires more than a button click, and requires a bunch of testing and tweaking, then I'm not interested in doing those kind of results. So precision boost, if you do an all core overclock, you'll lose the precision boost. The game performance is a little worse. With Intel, there's one button that later will boost it to 4.6 or 5.0, depending on the chip. It'll add enough voltage and it's fine. So that's why I did those tests that way. Now, <clears throat> let's jump into Cinebench. Oh, this is getting a little bit hard to read here, so uh, no surprise here, um, but we're going to focus on the chips in question. So the 3600 with uh, Precision Boost 1, obviously, no, no, nobody's surprised there, uh, but actually the 2600 with Precision Boost beat this uh, 9600K. Now, mind you, we have, we're going from 6 threads to 6 threads 
or uh, six cores is six cores and 12 threads. So where you'll see here, and I want to highlight, is on the 9600K, the single core uh, performance was a lot better. Uh, 42 to 401 and uh, 201 to 164. So obviously it was making up a lot, but multi-core still squeaked out a little bit of win. But the big difference here is when you go from the 2600 to the 3600. Not only is the 3600 as good or better than the 9600K in uh, single core, but multi-core had a huge lead, upwards of right around that 50% mark. Now, <clears throat> let's take a look at another multi-core test, and this is Blender. Same story. So the 9600K did lose out to the 2600 by about half a minute in, in a Blender test. Um, just a hair over that, but again, it has 12 threads versus six, but the six are a lot faster. But the 3600 comes in with a clean sweep, just under five minutes. Uh, it is going to perform just better overall. So a decent jump. You're going from uh, just a hair over six minutes to a hair under five minutes. So we're looking at about a 15, 18% decrease there. But most of you play games. So let's take a look at Ghost Recon Wildlands. Uh, look at the bottom here, the 2600 and the 3600 performed the worst, not by a huge margin. Uh, but we're looking at five FPS at 1080p, not huge, actually about four and a quarter. And then we're right around that three mark at 1440, so there's be less of a bottleneck. Um, moving on to For Honor, uh, there's a little bit more separation here. We're going from 132 at 1080p to 140. Um, so that's actually gonna be, um, 8 FPS, we're still only in that like 5% margin there. 1440, he was really close. Um, Rise of the Tomb Raider, here's some serious separation. Go from 130 at 1080p to 157. Even 1440p, there is some separation at 10 FPS. So we're at like 8, 9% at 1440 and 1080p, uh, 27 at 130. Uh, you're at about 20, probably close to 20% at that point. So in a CPU bound game, it's definitely gonna make a difference. Uh, the Division two, little separation, six FPS. CPU is not gonna be the limiting factor there. So is it worth spending roughly $200 if you already have this? No, it's really not. I think we knew that. The real question is, is if you have $200, just burn your hole in your pocket, you just want to spend it, you've paid all your bills, your retirement's good, whatever the situation, and you say, Steve, I need to convince myself to do this. No, I can't. I really can't because, I mean, I don't. I think the going rate's like 115 for this chip. I see them used for right around 100 bucks. Uh, I got this with Micro Center, and then there's a $30 discount off the, uh, the uh, 450 uh, Pro 4, and I have two of them. What, what I really like is, I think, like for $115 or whatever you spend on this, it's really less than $120, there's not a better chip at that price. Like, that's a lot of power for that price. I compared this to an Intel chip that's more than twice as much. I compared it to an AMD chip that's almost twice as much. And, I mean, I can't think of a single used chip at the price that this is new that's going to outperform it. Like a 9400F, we've done the video, it's close, right? But that's gonna be a little bit more expensive. Um, you're not gonna get to use not 8600K for like 150, it's still gonna be more expensive. Uh, I think the fourth gen I, core series is, is not, it's gonna be about the same, same single thread performance. So um, hopefully you guys liked it. Um, I'll put uh, this and this in the description below. Either one could be a decent buy depending on your goals. Uh, like the video if you liked it, dislike if you dislike, leave a comment, get subscribed. And as always, this is Steve from Big Head Tech. By the way, buying these does help me out. I do get a kickback. And I'll see you all later on down the road.